Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Wrestling Car Price Guide and WTC proudly bring to you its Wrestling Car Tag Team Champion of the World, <laughs> Paul, the Price Guide, and and Tony, the WrestlingTradingCards.com fellow. We're back. Although we never really went anywhere, <laughs> did we? <laughs> we bring you the Three Count Show. What's yeah. going on, Paul? Yeah, well, it's it's good to see you uh, and not have to worry about a ton of questions to ask people. It's nice to go back to this format just to keep uh, everyone in the loop. We were doing these shows um, every month, and then we decided at the end of last year, you know, what as busy as you are with the store and uh, trying to schedule it, let's see if we can't uh, cut back on these. And we decided to try this quarterly format. So this is the first quarter, 2024, a uh, three-count episode. And if this goes well and the feedback is good, then we'll see you three more times before the end of the year. And this is also, um, by the time you guys are watching this, uh, it'll probably be passed, but this is WrestleMania week, Tony. It is. My favorite week of the year. Um, You know, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> it's just, it's just... just that there's stuff going on with all my buddies starting on Wednesday night and then Thursday and then Friday night to SmackDown Hall of Fame. And then we got stuff going on Saturday. It's a thing with, with you go, well, you met Steve and, and yeah. John and Mark and then their wives and stuff. And we, we really do it. You know, people do Super Bowl things like we do WrestleMania things. And that's been that way for my group for a long time. So I was excited. We did it, we did it for a long time as well. Uh, but you know, things change once I got the store going. It's like that. Sure. It's, you know, I tried doing something nice last year by having a viewing party. That was a no, no. Yeah. Uh, I found out. So uh, that's that that's, a, that's a legal battle that I'm still fighting right now to this day. But um, so we, we don't host anything here at the store. We thought well, about you maybe could do doing something some quietly. You can invite from friends over, shut the door and do whatever the hell you want. But you just can't of course, post. of course, just can't post about it and advertise it. And so I got yeah. um, but, you know, still, we're going to do We're not going to do anything here. I think we're going to we might do like a raffle or something like that. Not the, quite uh, sure yet. We've talked about this on the collector series. The store is 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 doing exceedingly well, you know, for for the year that it's been. And we're going to talk about that a little later on today's yeah. show, the, the update yeah. at the uh, wrestling Sky store. But congratulations, man. It's great to see yeah. you up. What's yep. the, I don't know I don't know down in the states but in Toronto it's something like seventy five percent of all business small business fail in the first year you know and then another ten fifteen percent after that in year two so if you make it to year three uh, you're a success even if you haven't made profit you know yeah. just being able to keep your doors open you know it ain't it ain't easy but we'll get to that um, so and traditionally we we've always done these three count shows where we talk about new releases what's coming out what has come out. Uh, we, we we usually have a guide of some kind. I don't check out our show notes, sir, and I don't really see us having any uh, spreadsheets of any uh, going forward anymore. Well, we have we have our top ten. We did. That's the... good. Oh, that's right. You know what? I I do see that. Uh, helps <laughs> it. Reading is good, folks. Reading is good. Uh, make sure that you learn how to read. Well, what we did this uh, this month for the top ten, or this quarter for the top ten, is we yeah. took January, February, and March. So we go all yeah. the way back to the beginning of the year up until yesterday, basically. Um, so let's and, just let's just jump right into oh. what has come out so far in twenty twenty four. Okay, well, let's start with the big one, um, the big guys, which is Panini. Now, the last time we would have spoke, we were in that holding pattern where the legal shit had had, had us tied up, and we didn't know what was going to go on. We knew Elite was on break or on distributor shelves, but there was a, um, a hold on it. Um, since that time, the uh, Elite product has hit the market. That's actually called Don Rust. They use that name. Yeah. Uh, they One of the many licenses they own. Correct. Correct. So that that hit um, third week in February. And uh, the second release uh, from Panini was the European uh, Adrenaline. And that one is kind of like the Slam Attacks. Tony, you remember the ones that were kind of gaming cards? Correct. And, uh, 150 pieces of those and I should say something just you know from the set side no problem getting the elite set I've yet to be able to get an adrenaline set and I don't think I'm going to be able to because they're selling at about four or five dollars a card and there's 150 of them so you know we live in a world now where you know if you can buy a, a cheap base set for thirty dollars, that they you know jump, you click your heels, you know, yeah. impeccable and, and 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 immaculate and some of these other silly ones, you're spending big time, you know, five hundred bucks, thousand dollars, you know, immaculate, two thousand, God knows what what you're, what you're spending. This, you know, uh, this I was telling Clark this yesterday, you know, uh, I come from a time where a autograph card and a relic card were supposed to be worth more than a base card, and yeah. That's certainly not the case with the other big release that just came out, the 2023 Panini Impeccable. Most fucked up seating I've seen in some time. You know, you get nine cards in a pack, one pack in a box. And of that nine cards, five of them are auto or relic. Three of them are base cards. I repeat, three are base <laughs> cards. So if you're looking to put together, and by the way, current price on a box, Tony, $900. <laughs> yeah. 
is that has slipped i'm sure it's going to be down to 750 600 before we know it but yeah uh, it, it's been about a grand for the last couple of weeks yeah so anybody out there who's got uh, doesn't care about their singles hit, uh, hit up paul <laughs> please you know like I'm, I'm not paying an arm and leg for them but i'll take them off your hands and pay you something for them yeah. um and we've had this back and forth discussion about the the impeccables. And of course, Ryan and Adam did a did a complete breakdown on the entire yep. set. But one thing that they didn't do, and they don't Definitely check that out, guys, is 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 talk about the base sets. And in this case, this will be one specifically to address just because, you know, we heard two years ago, then all last year that it's it's not a good time for base collectors, you know, and uh, now it's virtually impossible. You know, if 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 you gotta be buying cards where they're seated, uh, you know, one per case or, or whatever it is, you know, three per case. It's insane, right? Yeah, um, it is. Now, nice looking set seems to be sort of a knockoff of the 2022s. I mean, it's that red splotch, the thick cards. Yeah, so it's nice thing, I, I know they're beautiful looking it's like that, but this is the thing about Panini that, that I've now realized with what, how many years we've got now, two years under our belt with Panini. Yeah. And it's, um, it's pretty much a uh, cookie cutter at this point for me. Uh, yes. While I, while the design is beautiful, it's you know how many times can you can you you know keep painting the same the same painting, and right. it's just it's what it looks like to me. So I'm not overly impressed by uh, the impact. I was like, yeah, it's beautiful, but there's nothing different about it from this year than last year to me. No, so, just different names. And you're just gonna different get names, pretty names. much. Yeah, you're gonna get some names like the CM Punk is obviously going to be a very desirable one. Um, you're gonna get lesser names too that you know some people care about, some people don't. You know, and as a set collector, you know. When Transcending came out, you could buy the whole set and it was five, six hundred, seven hundred in there somewhere. Yeah. A couple of them, you know, some of the subsets with seed and flare, you could buy for two, three hundred. These are sets. But since the Immaculate last year and, of course, um, this new set and then Immaculate coming again, uh, it's it's going to be tricky for set collectors. Right, man. Right. Yeah, um, sure will be. And, you know, uh, kind of uh, dialing back to that adrenaline set, it's a little bit because uh, the European uh, set, as you said. It uh, does remind me a little bit of the base set that Panini put out that people just kind of went under the radar. People didn't really, collectors didn't really know much about it. Yeah. And outside of like Chuckster owning a complete set, I didn't know of anybody else who owned a complete set, to be honest with you. Um, I don't even think you have a, you have a complete set of the 2022 base? Of which ones? Uh, the one European, it's called base. Yes, I do. Okay. It has a binder and everything with it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, got you you the, the, I, I, I got you the binder. That's right. You gave me the binder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so oh, I, thought you were, I, I thought, I thought you were talking about something else because there is a set that came out two years ago, an AEW set called Spectra that was very rare that not a lot yeah. of managed to, but finish. I was just, I was referring to the adrenaline set because it's being a European set. I know it's yeah. a gaming card, but it's well, like the ones that come buy, over you there. Buy, you can buy like, there are guys that are selling whatever cards you need. That's the thing now, you know, like guys will say, here's 150. Which yeah, one oh, yeah, you know, complete, complete your set auctions like that. Exactly. Just do a drop exactly. down and pick but out not a lot of guys one. that have assembled the entire set and made it available, which was basically my history in this hobby was right. purchasing all my, my stock that way, right? Guys that would, would purchase the product, break the product, assemble a master set or separate inserts with the, with the uh, extended base or the regular base and then your variants and stuff. And here Paul comes, buys it on the shelf and done. Um, those days are over. And, you know, next, next time we get together, which will be in another three months, it'll be after the national, we'll be able to talk about how this all sort of, uh, shook out um, with impeccable but even though we were talking the other day even though i'm probably 20 percent into the impeccables at this point I i'm not convinced i'm going to pull it off just because of the way the box pricing is and if you've only bought a few boxes and you got to re recoup your box cost you're gonna be charging a fortune for these cards right and again the on the secondary market the singles are just starting to hit so you know I don't know yet if I'm going to be able to buy $5 impeccable cards because I ain't spending $15, $20 for, for no names. You know, I'm just yeah. not going to do it. I did that in some cases, like on the Immaculate, the Roxanne Perez, which was the, the uh, rookie card, I think was $65. Like that's one base card. You know, now <clears throat> that was for me to finish the set. And, and the majority of them that I bought, I bought for 2 or $3 because I'm a bottom yeah. start and buy the cheapest ones and they go up, 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 up. Sure. And I have to, but um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to see how these impeccables on the base side shake out. But insofar as the chase stuff, the good stuff, the auto stuff, the high parallels, some nice stuff to chase there again. And uh, Immaculate Impeccable were, were big, big sets last year. So yep. I'm, I'm sure it's going to do well. It's it's just expensive. Yeah. You know, also on the high end right here too is, uh, you know, number two on our list here. So it's a Leaf Metal Legends. You know what, Tony, before we get to that, I want your opinion on the boxes on Impeccable. What do you figure? 
Because this isn't a panini phenomenon. I know Adam Ryan talked about it a bit, but what's your thoughts on why is it so fucking expensive? Yes, it's going to come down, but why? Like what's what's causing this to happen at this moment that you can still go on eBay and people are wanting $1,000 a box for nine cards? What was cost on it? Do we know what the initial cost was on it? Suggested retail? I don't recall. I, yeah, don't. I don't recall. I don't recall seeing what suggested retail was on this. So I don't know if it's another hype issue. Um, I'm not saying a pump and dump but, or anything along those lines. It's no, not. This isn't 2022 prism. I, as I was, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't think there's any hype behind it because we're not hearing anybody bitching and complaining about box prices right now. It's like, oh well, this is what you know, impeccable is supposed to be. You know, that's what it's supposed to be. So why are we? There's no complaints. I just don't understand why there's no complaints about it. Which is good. I'm glad there shouldn't be any complaints about it. Either buy, pay the high price and and get what you get or wait it out like you should with every products like that i guess in my opinion and then you know pick up what you need uh, down the road because this isn't going to be a thousand dollar box in about a month or so who knows maybe it, maybe it does hold maybe uh it does hold value beyond that um should it be a thousand dollar box in my honest opinion hell no yeah. um i i don't even think it should be half that price that's just yeah. me yeah yeah, I agree. It's it's it's, it's very expensive. And so I don't I don't know what caused the inflation of this box, uh, this product. I, I don't I don't know what that is to be honest with you. I I, I don't know what suggested retail is. You know, at least when uh, Prism came out, we knew that suggested retail was like one eighty five. I think it was, um, or one fifty. I'm sorry, uh, and it, it damn near came came close to that. Uh, but you know, it dropped dropped drastically, and uh, you know, people were like pointing fingers, like, "Hey, I told you so." Yeah, yeah. But no one's talking about a uh, impeccable like that. Well, and I, yeah, I to your earlier is. point, is it is it kind of accepted now that uh, impeccable and immaculate being the top tier, the high end sets are just going to be priced as such? Is that is this is this Panini's equivalent, I guess, in a sense, to transcendent? It's got to be. Right? You know, I mean, obviously, it doesn't hit but, that dollar what, amount, obviously, but what's more valuable than immaculate? I can't think of anything. So that's a great, uh, that's a great Adam, Ryan and other Panini expert, uh, uh, you know, question. I, I don't know. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that you have to like, we, we spend time looking at the high end, but uh, you'd have to look at the low end stuff too, you know, like yeah. uh, see, see what's, what some of the lesser autographs are trading for. And that gives you an idea. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I guess that's going to be your job here as the price guide guy. It's kind of go out there and start looking at some of these uh, 2023 impeccable autographs and find out what a, a, a doe drop is going for or you know yeah. uh you know well, i, I didn't I, didn't update, I have no idea i didn't update the immaculate on price guide until just a couple of months ago because it took that long you know you go back and you look at the 130 points and you look at the sales and you look at card ladder and you look at what sellers are presently asking for then i look at what it cost me to put together and mm -hmm. but i needed that year you know i needed that time to sort of figure out because if you're going to buy impeccable now you're paying more than you should Stuff always costs more at the outset. We know that, you know. And is even, that unusual, though? Do you think that's unusual, considering it's a higher end product? And why had why does it not take so long for uh, you know NXT 2.0 for you to figure that out? I think I think it's because, like you say, that's meant to be a one and done by the set. It, it, it's not something people are chasing necessarily. It's easy to get hold of. I don't know about the adrenalines. They're hard to find. Like I, I've I've not been able to even find lots of them. Guys selling, you know, here's 25 adrenaline cards. It, it's 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 just these guys here fill in your collection, and 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 one at a time. I kind of felt the same way when it came out that 2022 base set from Panini. Um, no one out here was really talking about it. Nobody out here was really collecting it. And you know, when I was over there in London and I happened to see that pack, I hadn't even heard of it to be honest with you until I saw a pack of it yeah, sitting yeah. there. And um, I thought this was interesting and I thought it was a cheap price point and brought a whole bunch back to the States with me and ordered a bunch more. Uh, thank you to Kevin Williams for you know helping what? me out. I'm just going to, while you're, while you're talking, I'm just going to grab it here. So this, this is, this is the one that we're talking about. Correct. This, this is the European one yeah. right now. So there's an equivalent. Also the, uh, the adrenaline does have a binder as well, right? Okay. So it's going to be a setup just like this and they're not thick cards like impeccable. And uh, no, uh, these are thin cards too. These are thin cards too, yeah. but these are, uh, more difficult to get a hold of for sure, you know. Then if I pull out, you know, you you, you pull out the uh, the big binder, you know, with, with these babies, you know, sure. these, these these were all these are the thick cards, and these were all 10, 15, you know, like big money for for these cards to put this yeah. set together. You know, but, that seemed to be more readily available. I just couldn't find a bunch of it uh, yes. originally, you know. Yes. And then I got I have a customer who I got hooked on those cards, and uh, he finally. He kept buying, he bought all my packs, like between him and a couple of others, they bought all my packs and he got to a point where he was still missing 12 cars to finish the set. 
and he finally went on eBay and was able to buy all 12, uh, 12 cards and finish it. So he's like the only guy that I know locally that even has, I've actually seen uh, and physically in my hand, seen a, a complete set of, yeah, I, I, I don't own a set. I mean, I'm not a set collector anymore, but no, I've I mean, if, tons yeah. of singles, you know, you know, two guys that are probably going to have the set. <laughs> yeah. So all I care about the Loomis card in there. So I'm just missing, I need right. a gold guys. I need a gold and I'm done. You, you, have, you have that base, right? You have the Loomis of base. Of course. I have, the Anyways, base, talk about I, I have a green parallel and a red parallel. Awesome. Okay, before we get to leave, I guess we should just quickly mention Upper Deck and, and AEW. Nothing there uh, in this past quarter, last when we saw you guys last. Don't mean to be no. a dick, but nothing new. Nothing doesn't surprise me. Well, you know, they had those two in quick succession. They had the lure, they had the metal, yeah. then they had the lure, then they had flagship. In yeah. fact, flagship had a boatload of cards in it. Like we yeah. didn't, I, I I don't know if Card Foundation did a, a deep dive on the uh, AEW. Ryan, uh, Ryan, or I shouldn't say Ryan, more so Adam, he doesn't collect, uh, AEW, yeah. so he doesn't talk about it. Um, so we don't, we don't get the deep analysis there, but just looking at the checklist, checklists, there was a shit ton of cards in that flagship, you know? Oh yeah. So they, they released quite a, quite a lot of cards in the last quarter of 2023. Um, I don't that know. Tells, that tells me it sat for a while. Like I don't, that's they, not something that just, it's not something that just sat, uh, that they, yeah, they didn't you know, printed and probably. pumped out. Yeah, I, I think it just sat for a while, and they had to get it out. I, I, and I, you know, I'm sure there's yeah. economics involved there in some way that's way beyond. They my wanted degree, to do it before the year was up. Maybe could be tax probably. Tax so, but now forget. we're now we're back to the, the normal upper deck where it's like you know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. All right. So you'd mentioned and, and 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 not and not to be not to be a dick about it either too because uh, the stuff when it comes out, I really enjoy the card designs. Now I'm not a big fan of that eight bit chase. Uh, there's no those reminiscence there's there. There's no, there's those, no nostalgic those, feeling for me there. Those, those got a fortune, those silly little... Videos. I know, they're, and I think they're ugly as hell. One of the yeah, ugliest card designs I've ever seen. Um, and I don't care what anybody else says about it. Uh, but I, generally speaking, the cards themselves are beautiful looking. Like I love I love the metal cards. Nice. I think they look amazing. I yeah. love the metal. It, it was That was the best release of all of them, of all the upper deck stuff. I, I think I have to agree with you. I think so, too. Yeah. Maxi, quiet. Can you hear the cat, by the way? He's been like meowing, meowing the entire time. No, I can't, I can't oh, hear okay. anything. So okay. I, I was going to ask you to say if you, can, if you can hear the chanting going on next door. No, like. <laughs> Good. Oh, this, guy, this guy's been making so Guest much. Guest appearance. The entire time. Max, say hello to the wrestling card world. Now, quiet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Panini makes great looking stuff. The Impeccables and, and Immaculates are great looking cards too. But yes, the uh, the last metal AEW was something. Now, to talk about a, a set that isn't that great looking, that only had six different names in the card, you alluded to it earlier, the Leaf Metal Legends. Mm -hmm. Of course, that whole thing had everything to do with Mr. Dwayne Johnson. And of course. fusion in the set and the fact that he uh, signed a, stick, a sheet of stickers, 30 of them or something like that, and that got made in, in, into the cards. But you know what? They're doing well. They're still holding it about three grand an autograph, right? And that's yep. a Leaf card. Leaf doesn't do $3,000 wrestling cards, but if you have Dwayne Johnson, you do. Yeah, um, of course. Give me your thoughts on that set, and I'll give you mine. Uh, you know, minimal. You know, like I said, what six six subjects in the in the whole set? I think. Um, I'm not a fan of the designs. First me off, me um, relative to what we've become used to. Yeah, I I don't think they're pretty by any means. Um, and I don't I don't like the fact that you they can legally go out and use a wrestling image of The Rock and then have it as a Dwayne Johnson card. So, well, I understand. I understand the legalities of it, so it makes that, complete that's total that sense. That's that gray area we've always had, right? Yeah, you know that. that like, I mean, I mean, what are you gonna discussion? do? You're gonna go out there and you know and, and grab you know a, a picture of him as a scorpion king and then call him the Rock? I, I don't, I don't understand. Exactly, so, exactly. Uh, it just uh, doesn't make sense to me. But I, I get that's the only way you can really do that. You unless because no one's gonna buy. I don't think you're gonna get a three thousand dollar Dwayne Johnson card for a guy wearing a suit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, from from some you know red carpet event, where you know, and I don't understand the legalities on how you get away with taking an actual WWE uh, image. I'm assuming, or unless it's some fans photo that they got the rights to, if it's you know, uh, um, uh, uh, what's it called, um, Getty images like that, you can go off and pay a licensing right for that if you want to, I guess. So there's there's I guess there's ways around that, but it just makes it silly to me to have a picture of him and you know doing this you know. In the corner of the turnbuckle right there. So I, I clear the rock, you know, no shirt, wrestling trunks, the whole bit. And it's signed Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. And I'm sure most of us wrestling guys would rather have it signed the rock. Of course. My comic images rock is more valuable to me than anything I can get from this set. 
but but collectors are yeah. still paying. You know, like I know. Well, each subsequent one is going to be a little bit less until they settle at whatever twenty five hundred, twenty two thousand, where wherever it ends up being. Um, but it was a success. Now let me Absolutely. point this out. Let me let me point this out about what as well as happened with Leaf with Leaf, and I'll say good on them. But they have in their warehouse somewhere rolls and rolls and rolls of Hulk Hogan signed signatures. Oh God, yeah. And they've been sticking those into every multi sport release that you can think of. In every design, you know, I could name like 10 of them in the last 20 years, or, or sorry, in the last two years. But all of a sudden, they do the same thing with this relief release, and now you're getting 50% more for that same Hulk Hogan, same Ric Flair. It's like, wait a minute, there was a, a set last year that had a Ric Flair autograph, and it was way less than this. So oh, yeah. it, it's dragging up the value, the fact that they have uh, the MGF Auto, and MGF is available in other stuff. But only, but only in that product, though, not previous products, though. It's not the value's not going up in past releases of no, of, of no that's my point. You can go back and you can buy a Ric Flair or a Hulk Hogan or an MJF Leaf Auto for far less than what you would pay for a 2024 Leaf Metal Legend. Yeah. Yeah. But because true. it's part of this release, part of this brand, um, you know, people are getting sucked into thinking, oh, this is this is special, this Hulk Hogan autograph. You do you think that um as Leaf employees for the holidays, they get a Christmas card that has a sticker in it from Hulk Hogan on it too? Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Leaf employees go yeah. home open their fridge and they don't know what one is ketchup or which one is mayo because instead of them being labeled, they have Hulk Hogan stickers instead of <laughs> exactly. That's how, that, that, that's, that's how many, that, that's, that's how many there are out there. That's but, why it, it, it boggles my mind. It's a whole different discussion for another time. It's like that, but it boggles my mind that uh, there's all this clamoring for a Hulk Hogan autographs. Uh, and there are certain individuals and people out there who collects like that, uh, which is great. But I don't, for me, I don't hold any high value in a Hulk Hogan autograph because there's so many of them. Well, remember, so what, many. remember what Rich and Brian said, the queue goes around the building and then some every time. Of course, this. but you know, the, the fan base speaks for itself. I mean, yeah. he's, I mean, it's like the Babe Ruth of wrestling for crying out loud. So we totally understand it. Totally get it. I don't get, get the value get, of it though. When we, get, when we get to our top 10 sales of, of the quarter, Hogan's name is going to come up again. Of course and, it will. And, 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 it, and, it, and in a big way. And it just speaks to, um, you know, his staying power. And like, he's, 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 he's a big uh, cultural name. Like he's, he's a very, yep. very well-known celebrity outside of our world. And you that's know? the only, that's the other part of the argument that I would give why the Dwayne Johnson cards go for so much, because this right. is a, this is a household name. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. You so. don't, you don't, you don't have to be a wrestling fan to know who this is. Yes. As a matter of fact, that's a it's a it's a thing that's been going on here with the store. A lot of kids who come in here who are buying this actor turned wrestlers action figures now. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's because it, the same idea. They know. don't know any better, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So but on the whole, a successful uh, release by Leaf. Nice to see. I mean, it's not like it Leaf hasn't done dedicated wrestling before, no. but this one was, you know, uh, definitely noteworthy because of the DJ autographs um, and, and because they did it. You know, we haven't yeah. seen anything from The Rock signed going back to Comedy for 20 years, images, right? Uh, now that he sits on the board of TKO, I suspect that somewhere down the line, there might be a Topps Rock autograph, but God knows. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, last autograph. I mean, you're talking, you know, you're looking at uh, Inkworks years. Um, I'm talking of The Rock. Nothing oh, I'm just, I'm just talking about anything. The Rock. Yeah. Well, Rock. The Rock's last autograph card as The Rock was by Inkworks. He signed The Rock as Scorpion King and Memory Returns. Oh, did he really? Yeah, it's not signed Dwayne Johnson. The only Dwayne Johnson autograph cards are from the movie Doom. And these. And these now. Right. Yeah, right. that's it. But there's a market there. You know, like yep. I, I I published the first one. Of course, it was at Quad Auto that sold for 6500 uh, we'll talk about that when we when we look at the top numbers, and that was Hulk and uh, Dwayne Johnson on the same thing. So, so go on the opposite end now. What do we got here for new indie releases? We had uh, a ton. There's always a ton of new indie releases. Yeah, there's always a lot, and thanks to the Brotherhood, and thanks to to Nick and Armand, and Tony O, and 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 Caleb, and, and Matt, and those guys for staying on top, and New Bauer, and Morgan. These guys, these guys don't miss a beat. You know, like nope. we're 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 just trying to keep straight with all of it, and trying to get our content out, and just you know tie it all together and there's something else um, Armand sent me uh, Proving Ground Wave 2 and I looked at it I said just it, Proving yeah. Ground Wave 1 and I decided you know what I'm just going to make one Proving Ground 2024 and all, all under one but mm -hmm. some of the other names we had Proving Ground we had Toyhio uh, that's a name that we see a lot in the Brotherhood conversation back and forth oh, Ohio yeah uh, Dream Wave had a set in, in the first quarter uh, ICW or ICW MKE had a set and there was also a company um 
we'll have a conversation about this called FIRST, uh, F with the number one RST. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this is that they're very LGBTQ friendly and they also uh, sponsor transgender um, kinds, of, kinds of things. And I was thinking about that, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the news about how transgender people are coming into sports and fucking things up in a big way, you know, men saying mm -hmm. they're women and dominating a sport. And I thought in wrestling, that doesn't matter because they're not really hurting each other, you know, uh, you know, they can work together. So there's not sure. that same stigma, if you will. Uh, uh, in wrestling, there would there would be in real competitive sports, you know, uh, sure. around that that issue. Um, but I thought that was great. Uh, their 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 ring, at least I saw a picture. Of the ring has a rainbow flag on it. So you know, in interesting. And they they did their first set as well. And the boys from Brotherhood let us know about that. I don't have mine here yet. I don't think. Um, but uh, yeah, congratulations to them. Yeah, absolutely. and then of course there's guys like Corey Bastions always got something on to go and you know we we didn't get into you know there's been a, a bunch of custom things uh, gary labeler is doing stuff but those were the big ones i think the proving ground yep. the dream waves the icws you know right yep and if Absolutely. you want to know about them come on to wtc come on to price guide we've got them listed and you can see what they are you know the prices i generally price them around you know 40 at the low end 75 at the high end you know it's not an exact science where you can say you know this set is worth this much this is worth exactly like even that's why it's called that's why it's called a guide folks exactly. just to guide you even even the bowl is now are, are are like four hundred bucks a set or something now it's it's insane, you know. Yeah, I'm about ready to uh, acquire all of them here in a, in a little bit. Good for you. They're hard to get. You know? Yeah, yeah, I got a guy. I mean, I used to go to all the events when I was living in SoCal. Um, the the bowl events were always hard to get into. So if you didn't have right. a ticket, I mean, they sold out within seconds. But I got a buddy of mine that lives out in that area. He went to all of them and he had all the cards. He's like, I'm just kind of, you know, I don't, I don't collect cards. So if you want them, I'm, I'm like, I'm okay. Just glad, I'm just glad. And Chuck and I have had this conversation a few times that I bought them when I did, yeah. that I bought the GCWs when I did. And then going way back, you know, I, I, you know, the stuff with uh, Mercedes Monet and uh, the, the, the early Tyler, the MN and, and Missouri ones, sure. all these things you can't buy today. The Jakaras bought a while ago. You try and buy these sets now, forget it. You know, yeah. a lot of money. Okay, sir, you want to get into what our top sales of the quarter was, January, February, March, 2024? Let's get into it. Okay, we'll do them backwards, number 10. Now, in this, I should mention, number 10 is Hulk Hogan, and you're going to hear Hulk, Hulk Hogan's name five times and five different cards. And even back when we were doing the three counts, very rare would you see five different cards in a month uh, of Hogan. But we got five different Hogan cards uh, in the top 10. So that's quite an accomplishment. Number uh, 10 is the PMG, a BGS 9 from 2013. That was the employee mm -hmm. card. And that's always a popular one. I don't have that card. I, I got to admit, I'm not fond of how that card looks. You know, it's not Me the greatest, greatest looking card in my book. And now it's too late. <laughs> you know, when I had the chance to get it for the $100 back then, uh, you know, now you're buying, you're buying it for 37.15 graded. What, what do you figure that rock card goes for? Two grand, 1500? Probably. Yeah. Because it's a crap shoot on what you might be getting on it, but I, right. I'm never a big, I'm not a big fan of the design either. It's like that. I, I don't understand the PMG look and uh, no. outside of the scarcity, I guess, of them. I don't understand the allure of them because the design to me has never been appealing. That's why I didn't like the, um, the PMG look of from that uh, uh aew set either yeah uh, i agree just, I, I, yeah. I i don't get what the fuss is on very them. plain very plain yeah. it's like it's, it's like, like a, a very very bad, very bad um um photoshop job <laughs> yeah yeah that's what it seems like um so that was 3715 um number nine is an 82 wrestling all-stars psa 7 now we used to see those every month you know there's going to be a hulk hogan all-star and it's the price is going to be commensurate on the grade you know so mm -hmm. the highest one we had for this quarter was a psa 7 um which was autographed you know sometimes you know, you, you get an eight that's not autographed it's going to go for more um, but this one went for 38.74 and this you know uh, on on zan's iconic 25 this was the number one card and it, it's it's hard for me to see any other card coming along anytime soon it's going to displace it from being the number one card agreed number Eight is the 2024 Dwayne Johnson Leaf Metal Autograph. So we just picked one. We picked the most expensive one, which was the first one to go, and that went for four grand. Um, like we said earlier, there was 25 or 30 of them, Tony. You know that t on on the sheet, and yeah. you know that's an expensive sheet when you figure out yeah. what each one of those autographs <laughs> is going to go for uh, on, on card. Funny um, that sheet didn't go missing. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's Some another whole. Sub that's another whole uh, show we could have talking about the mystery of all these cards missing from. Yeah, exactly. but, hey, we'll go on. <laughs> number number seven, and this one I tweeted on the time because I, I I don't get this 
now. I might have understood it a year ago when we were on the precipice of this guy coming into WWE. But number seven is the 2022 uh, Prism Gable Steven, uh, Gable Stevenson, but not the Black Prism base, the the auto card, which was, yep. you know, they were less than than just the, the straight blacks. And this fucking thing sells for 47.50, right? I don't get the, I don't understand this. At all. Somebody, somebody please in the comment section, please explain to me why this is for an unproven talent. I understand the, 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 yeah, I, I understand the idea of prospecting, but I, I, I don't think this person's going to be who you think is going to be. I really just don't think it's going to be that. I, I just no, admit it's my, not even and, and I'll be not... I'll be the first to admit why I'm wrong when the guy gets inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame one day. Well, let's start with a match. Yeah, let's start with yeah. a match. Yeah. The uh it's not it's not the black prism, which which went for however much it went back for back in April of 2022. Well, it is a black prism autograph. It's a black prism autograph, but they don't command as much. There's tons of black prism autographs yeah. out there that we don't talk about because they're not in the five grand range. You know, this is 4750 for Gable Stevenson, you know, and God bless, you know, and I'm sure there's Olympic guys and amateur guys rubbing the types to say, oh no, this guy is the guy. Mm -hmm. Um but uh that one I don't get, you know. So if someone can explain to me the allure uh, at that price, I'm all ears. Number six, Hulk Hogan, 1981, uh, Marusho, which was a PSA 4.5. We should mention on those Japanese ones, they don't grade highly usually, right? Mm -hmm. So a 4.5 might be the equivalent of a seven, you know. Uh, and that's the one that's the multicolored robe that he's wearing. Yep. And, uh, I use that as a featured image for the checklist, yeah. Correct. That's right. That's right. That's why I'm used to seeing it as often as I do, because you have it featured. But, um, you know, that one sold for um, five thousand dollars. Yeah. Five grand. That's amazing for a for a four point five. Exactly. Now, the next one, you know, very well is the 1982 Hulk Hogan Cosmos PSA 8. If it was a PSA 9, you can go and open up a little store <laughs> on, on, on your proceeds from it. Can on you do that? So sure. <laughs> You know, maybe you could take your wife out to dinner on an eight, but uh, <laughs> 6,500 bucks on that one. And those are the smaller Cosmos, the Flair and the, the, the Hogan. Hugely sought after still to this day. If you get a, if you get a 10 on one of those, uh, you're in the money big time. Only, yeah. only one out there, the 10 yeah. and only two, two that are nines. Yep. Yep. And you've held one of the nines. So mm -hmm. you know. number four is the quad bench, uh, the quad leaf auto I mentioned earlier, the uh, one of one Dwayne Johnson, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Steve Austin medal that, that ultimately traded for 6,500. What, ha what happened was, I don't know if you recall, the high bid on that was 8,500, which was a shill. Or sorry, the mm -hmm. second highest bid was 8,500, but it ended up being shilled. And we're going to talk about all that nonsense. Yeah. And uh, Buddy relisted it again and had to take a $2,000 haircut on it and ended up selling for $6,500. I don't, I don't know if it was the same guy that came in second the first time, but um, still 6,500 bucks. And that's for the four of them. Now, question to you, if that was an MJF, I mean, I, I presume you have to have Johnson and Hogan. If that was an MJF, say, instead of Austin um, or Flair, do you think that would be worth mm -hmm. more? Um, that's a tough call. I'm going to say no. I agree. Uh, but but all it takes is, uh, you know, someone like, uh, 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 you know, Joey Grubens like that to, to Yeah, to it just takes a great day to decide otherwise. <laughs> they're having to come in there and say otherwise like that. So. Um, but I'm, I'm going to probably say no, having Austin on there because, you know, number three, it plays into this right now, which is amazing to me, which I, I, I love seeing because I always thought that Austin's very right. undervalued. Yeah. Number three is 1991 stunning Steve, um, Romy auto for the Argentinian set PSA nine. So I reckon that those two probably don't grade that well. So a PSA nine is something. On well, that. A, uh, first off a PSA nine, is that a PSA nine, the actual grade of the card or PSA nine on the, on the autograph? I think it was a card. Okay. That's that's impressive because those uh, chromies don't usually grade very high like no. that. Which is um, why I probably traded for seventy five hundred bucks because I think you buy the chromie set for what fifteen hundred bucks or something now thousand dollars for the set. Yeah, the last one I sold, I think Easy. I sold for around that price. I sold one for about yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. So a graded uh, Austin, which is obviously the the big card in that set, mm -hmm. um, it's like the Rocky Maivia in the uh, Cardinal Games trivia. That's the one that people want, and uh, seventy five hundred. And this, um, also keep in mind, it says autograph version too. So correct. Correct. Number two was the inscribed auto that we talked to um, with Rich Hopkins about. Mm -hmm. It was involved in 1981 Hulk Hogan Poppy inscribed. That was a PSA nine and that sold for 8,235. 
Now we know, Tony, that last year, one of the biggest sales of the year, and one of the biggest sales ever in the history of wrestling cards was a PSA 10 yep. on, that, on that Hogan Poppy, Poppy um, that wasn't autographed. Yep. You know, So um, for those that don't know this card, it's that the way Rich had it inscribed is absolutely beautiful. You know, because because that poppy card is mostly white, it, it gives area for Hulk to sign and, and say something cool, which it did on this one. And it's one of the nicer cards I've ever seen. Um, but because it was a nine and not a 10, it didn't crack the 10K mark. But um, $8,235, still very respectable for, uh, you know. It's so great. It's five, a great price. Yeah, there's five Hogan cards. The, the, the yeah. poppy, the all-star, the Marucho, the uh, PMG, and the uh, Cosmos. Um, you know, that shows... Some people might think he's a racist asshole, but I don't. I still think he's one of the best ever. And I think that a lot of people share that sentiment. Agreed. Top sale. I, of the I, I'm not a fan, but that's besides the point. But number one here, um, this you was, don't see this. You don't see him on top very often. Yeah. The biggest sale was the uh, 1982 Ric Flair Wrestling All-Stars PSA 9 that traded for 12200 We had another one of those. I think Danny grabbed it last quarter of the last year. But this is the only one that cracked five figures in the first quarter. Um, again, because of the high grade. You know, if you have a Flair PSA 9, it's, you're in the money. If you have a Flair Hogan, you're really in the money. You and know? I assume that this is also the graded card itself is 9, not the autograph. Correct. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's impressive. And it's impressive for that card, first off, to get graded, because we all know how much how difficult it is to get a high grade in some of these All-Stars. Um, what's disappointing or weird, not disappointing, but what's weird to me is that we had so many consistent five-figure sales last year. Now we're here, we are covering the first three months of the year, and we only have one. We only had one. It's but we, 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 we only had a, a handful of them last year. You know, you'd have one here, then nothing, nothing, nothing. There was one month last year, I think it was September, which was the month where we had the... Um, now we had October, we had three in the top. Yeah, that we had the All-Stars, the, the Poppy, like we had we had three huge ones. Yep. And, and we had because one was a limitless card, the MJF, and we right. had uh, Andre that went for twenty three four, and then we had the right. big one, which, which is the Hogan Poppy that went for thirty one and change. Right. Uh, but but you know the month before that we had a, a five figure one. So every month, for the most part, there's a five figure one. And actually, there's more five figure cards than there were you know, per month than there were there, there weren't. To put it that way. Uh, so for yeah, us so to go, and go say, are we are we are we hitting a bit of a, a slump at the high end? Certainly, things no, I, don't, I don't know if we're hitting a bit of a slump. What it is, I think, is that some of these high end cards are becoming even more scarce because they're being bought up. Yeah. And I don't think these guys who are paying five figures for a wrestling card are turning around and trying to flip it again for more. I think these guys are paying big collectors. money, are, are doing it for their collectors. They're no. collectors. No, it, it, it's guys like us. You know? So, um, you know, uh, as we start seeing some of these uh, special cards hit the market, yeah, I expect them to kind of hit those high numbers, and then I don't think you're going to see them again. Yeah, I agree. It's wrestling is difficult to speculate on. You know, it's easy if you're me, Chuck, or David Peck, and there's no one else around, and it was ten years ago. Yeah. But today it's difficult. You know, like and the gradings, the grading spurious. You know, I'm not going to get into grading and 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 the inconsistencies of it, but they used to they used to be more generous on their on their grading. You know, what might be a Hogan eight today, or sorry, two years ago, not two years ago, ten years ago, might be a six today. And, you know, True. there's prime reason to some of this stuff. And it happens all the time where someone says, look at this. And then you look at the card and it's off-centered. It's got a thing. It's got this. It's got a blemish. You know, so I honestly think that the guys that got their stuff graded earlier, you know, got better grades on the whole. Now, I can't prove that. It's just a, a, a sense of vibe, you know, sure. based, based on what I see on these numbers and what I see from my colleagues or, or you know, or, or the guys in the hobby, Um with some of their top cards and, and their top yeah. grades. And I'm thinking, you so, know what, it doesn't look as good. Well, so then uh, that's a nice transition into uh, speaking of big numbers like that. What about these big numbers that end up being worthless? We yeah. call that shilling situation. So we got a problem, guys. You know, we've, 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 we've got something really nasty that's been happening over the last few months. And we haven't really spoken a lot about it. I've been pissed off about it. So I've kind of kept my mouth shut on it. Yeah. And like Tony says, yeah, what, what, what happens is, is, is on all... I won't say all, but on a high percentage of the high profile, high dollar cards, some Yahoo is, is, go, is going in there and shilling them and uh, taking the card um, off, off the table by just bidding it and with no intention to pay. And we, we believe it's it's one guy that's doing this. Now, I don't know if, if this guy is known to us. You know, I don't know if he's watching us right now. Um, 
but I do know that it sucks. And I, you know, I was thinking about this and I was going to just let loose on the guy and I figured why, mm -hmm. you know, guy like that, that's not going to have any effect on, you know, um, I could, I could make an impassioned plea that whoever it is that feels the compulsion to torturously interfere with wrestling card auctions, you're fucking it up for everybody. Not just, you know, Adam Gelman, who you might be pissed off at or whatever, whatever the case, whatever your motivation, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's asshole -ish behavior, you know, and I'd like it to stop. Now I know it's being looked into eBay has, has policies with regards to, to show bidding. I don't think they're going to do anything about it. You know, um, I don't think so either, but it's, and, but it's and, and uh, it notice it's noticeably only with modern Panini related type products, I think, right? Yeah, it seems like or is it, it or 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 is it across the board in your experience? Because well, no. I, I always see I see on social media, uh you know, which I've been off of a lot lately, and I'm 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 much happier for it. Um uh I, I've noticed that it's always revolving around, you know, some of the Panini products. Uh, does this happen with the high end MJF stuff for for AEW? Is it happening with vintage, or is it Look, just all the stuff, stuff that's on this top list has been has gotten through? You know, like if it's a best offer that's been accepted, or you can see there is a, a mm -hmm. shit ton of bids with a legit high feedback winner. Um, but what's happening oh. is that someone's just taking it upon themselves to fuck around. You know, and they're wrecking it. You know, for for all of us, and it's it's hugely disrespectful to the community. You know, now. You know, there, there's, there's no small secret that Adam Gelman is not liked by everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So when this first happened, first thing I did was I reached out to some of the guys I know don't like them. And I had mm -hmm. very direct conversations with some of the guys. You know, these guys don't communicate with each other. They don't follow each other. And there's just a divide. And the divide yeah. is probably going to be there for a while. And it's a shame. We talked about this years ago about why can't we all get along. And how, yeah, how, it's, how it's, guys it's, in the hobby it's quiet now. Out. So I, I really like that it's quiet right now. So it's really good. Well, it's quiet but, because yeah. certain people aren't around, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's fine. It, it's perfectly fine. But, yeah. you know, I noticed that, you know, we did talk about like the the quad auto that hit, you know, the, it got shielded to death apparently. And, and that's why I had to take a $2,000 less. But but I also noticed the top 10, there's not a single Panini card in the top 10 from January well, there was, to March. There, there was a Rock Prism. There was a bunch that aren't on this list, you know. I understand that, but they didn't crack our top 10. No. So my, my point is that we've almost always had some kind of Panini related product in our top 10 for the past uh, year, year two, almost two years now. Yeah. Uh, and this month, when we do the recap for the three. Now, is it fair to say it's because of this guy, because of because of the actions of this Schiller, that's that's just trying to take these things off? You I'm, know. I'm pretty sure there's probably a small percentage of it, but not well, very high. But maybe we're, a small we're, percentage. we're putting the word out there. And I mean, you know, we're doing the jobs of the auction houses for them that, hey, if you've got a high value card and not just Panini and new anything. Go to Heritage. Go to Golden. Go to PWCC. Or 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 don't or don't run the auction. Just put a buy it now price on right. and start. You know you know do that. I or mean, you know you've got or you know make you've got it, a or, make it, item. or make it clear in your description that you know um, if this thing is shilled, the guy in second place gets it at that number. You know there's so well, many things. Second so place many. person can be a shiller too. I guess you don't know. You don't know. I mean, well, it's the safest cool? way to. The safest way to do this is go into your settings and make sure you turn off anybody who has zero feedback. First off, yeah. you, can, you can say that they, they, no, no, nobody with zero feedback is allowed to bid. Uh, secondly, uh, don't list it as an auction. You know, if you feel like this is a ten thousand dollar card, list it for ten thousand OBO, yeah, and and, and go from there. Yes. Just, I, I think that you're doing a, a a disservice to yourself, you know, by uh, taking the chance of having uh, one of these assholes uh, try to shill bid it. Right, but and that's an unfortunate. But, 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 but if all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden people aren't listing their cards because of it, then this guy wins, you know. Well, you can list your card, just don't list it as an auction. Yeah, it's a real simple solution. You know, I mean, obviously eBay and these auction houses aren't going to do jack shit to try to you know protect the, uh, a seller. No, and it's being looked into. You know, I've, I've you know, I've, I've I don't, at guess a peripheral what? level, at a peripheral level, I like. There you go. I just looked into it. Yeah, well, I, I know that that Adam and, and Brett are, are trying to take it further because we'd all like to know, you know, because it's it's of course it's, we would. I mean, it's 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 annoying that I have to go out to who we might think it is, who we might consider to be a suspect, and say, "Hey, dude, you know, what are you doing?" Oh, it's not me, and be chatting with them and determining, "Yeah, it's not you," you know, because you're not that kind of guy. And there's nobody that I'm aware of in this hobby that's that kind of guy, but <clears throat> there is, yeah. and and you know. There clearly is. Yeah, and, me, me uh, calling him me, me calling him a piece of shit probably won't be the first time. You know, the guy's got a mirror. No, I agree with you. So yeah, you know, all I can say is on behalf of the wrestling card community, uh, you know, please stop it. Just, just stop. Just 
don't do this anymore. You know, if you happen to be watching this now, um, you know, just stop. Yep. All right. Uh, what's new at Wrestling Guy Store PHX? You know, every time I, we speak, you tell me I've got this, I got that. You got to come down and see the shelves now. You're you've got more <laughs> store appearances. So you know, uh, I like to talk about collectibles and wrestling beyond cards. So you take the spotlight now, Tony. Well, even even with the cards, oh, no. it's been a it's been a feature here at the store now. So I've, I've been really really happy about that. In the last couple of months, cards are starting to take off here for the store. You know, it's always been a goal of mine since even before I opened the store and we talked about it, where I love to get people more into collecting trading cards. And uh, it was hard in the beginning because I had no display case. I just had a table and that was it. Now with the display case, I'm able to feature out things and rotate things in and out of there when I need to. And I'm starting to see, um, you know, uh, a pickup in, in card sales, both in packs. Packs really started it for me. When I started introducing packs and I got myself a display case that actually has a feeder and they can actually just buy their packs. Uh, you know, that gambling aspect in people's minds are going, oh, I don't know what's in there. I want to get some. And uh, then they got addicted to it. Now they're in there buying some slabs out of my, you know, out of my display case or going through my uh, my dollar box, dollar plus box and picking out things. So it's been fun. And then seeing people on social media posting like, hey, I just picked up this Kelly Kelly number 10 cards like that. Who are the other nine cards? And I got to get them. Yeah. And so it kicked in. So it's been um, it's been fun. I've been enjoying that aspect. But. It's uh, very cool with that. I remember when I came last year, you had a shit ton of cards then all over the yeah. place, not organized. And I know yeah. you and Nick have done a huge job on trying to get yeah. that all put together. And all those those uh, cases behind you there, they're all drawers full of cards organized by year, by manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's just a matter of time of getting that website up to the point where it becomes the de facto place where everyone knows to go to buy wrestling cards. It, it's, a, it's a it's a big process. So anybody who's done it knows it. Uh, that's a big process. And I think once we get in the rhythm of actually uh, doing it, the first steps are trying to find what kind of a actual database I want to actually start using to, to put in there. Do I build up my own database? Do I hire a company to do the bat database? There's places to go to do that. And then once we get into that rhythm of like inputting, 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 it, it, it I think it'll go relatively quick, quickly. And just like your site, uh, uh, WTC site, it's never going to be complete. It's never going to be finished because there's always stuff coming in all the time, new things that we never knew that existed. So the sites get updated, the database gets updated, you know, new inventory. You know, I, I'm getting people all the time bringing in. Uh, I mean, I've got I've got a whole bunch of sealed wax back here now. I've got people bringing them in me, like just dumping sealed wax on me now, going like, hey, uh, you know, give, give me this. And I go, I can't pass that up. That's too good of a deal. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, I mean, that's just from the card aspect. Yeah. I mean, it'll get there. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And, Anything else uh, other than cards? Been, you know, figures obviously has been a big thing for you. Figures always the same. I mean, figures, you know, title belts. I've been getting a collection of pay per view chairs in here. I got a guy who's got like 35 different pay per view chairs. He brought me five to start off with. You know, those are getting a, a view. I'm about ready to post a video. I had a, a gentleman um, that uh, JR, who came, uh, a guy who lives in, um, in, in Denver came out here and did a complete little video package of the whole store. And, and he'd done one for the wrestling guy store in Los Angeles. Uh, him and his girlfriend stopped by here and did a whole little video package about what he bought from the store and uh, it featured everything. In the store. It was really nicely done. Um, and so uh, I'll be posting that here soon, but it's just a, it's a grind, man. It's a grind. Uh, the, the community is, is, is embracing us. You know, I'm still dealing with the issues that I deal with. You know, in addition to being in a small business and, and the, the neighborly crap, but uh, I just stay the course of what we're doing for ourselves. Uh, we've um, branched out and are now in uh, working with a local promotion called Phoenix Championship Wrestling, PCW. And uh, very, very, yeah, very good weekend, people. Did you? Did you have one of them? Uh, no, no. Um, we have uh, our next event with them is going to be in May. We just did one in February, I think. February, yeah. And um, maybe... Yeah, February. Uh, they're great people. Great people. They reached out and they're like, how can we not working together, man? Hand, glove. Yeah, why are we not working together? And these guys are doing good. They 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 do great crowds of 600 plus people for Ooh, their for shows. Sure. Um, and uh, you know, it's a very competitive market here. There's a lot of independent promotions here that are very much trying to compete for the same audience. And I like the mindset of PCW and that we just do what we do. We're, we're putting on the best product that we can possibly put out. And we're trying to make sure the fans are having a good time. And I think the fans coming out are really enjoying to see that. And so it's been really nice to go, you know, Nick goes with us every one of the shows and help set up and, 
you know, we sell merch at the table and I look at it as a marketing aspect. You know, I, I'm paying for a table spot. Uh, I pay to be on their flyers and um, it's marketing for me. So that's yeah. all I care about. They have that a great town here is there's, there's guys that, that, that do wrestling stuff, pictures, eight by tens, figures and yep. things like that. And I've seen that so, grow. I've seen that business. I've seen Dave's business grow from, you know, when we were at the Legion to maybe 75 of us to several hundred, you know, yep. that, that, that last one, I didn't get a seat. <laughs> That's how busy well, it's, it. it's, it's been nice because, uh, you know, we just <clears throat> celebrate over a year. So January was our one year anniversary, yep. you know, how we, here we are now in the first week of April and, uh, we've gone, you know, reflect a little bit, go back and look where we were at and where we are now. And, uh, the store is really filled out. I see the old card life TV episode that I did here talking about the sale idea. of that Hogan. And I look at that and I go, man, the walls were bare. And it was so embarrassing to see my graded cards just laying on a table because there's no place to really put them. And uh, now you look at this place and it's just like, we're, we're, we're about ready to outgrow this place right now. So there's we're, we're talking about you know moving already. We're talking about maybe expanding in some way. And it's just, um, I know my wife doesn't care for to hear that because that's just expanding and needs more money we have to pay. But, you know, it's, the community is really embracing us and we're providing an atmosphere here that is um the fans seem to really like they really enjoy they get an opportunity once a month or every other month to to meet some of their heroes and uh they get some good quality time with them you know not like they're going to sit there and have a 20 minute conversation but you know in the time it takes for them to get to that table meet them get their picture with them have them sign you know they, they have a good interactions like that and people always leave here uh, feeling really good and appreciative of what we're providing here for them. So, you know, the, all the years of connections that I've made working in the business uh, have kind of paid off now for here. And uh, instead of traveling the road to go with the talent, the talent now is coming here. And they have, a, they have, as we tell everybody, we just had Kelly Kelly here this past weekend. We had an up and coming girl, Brittany Brooks. That's uh, what I thought before. was part of that organization. Well, she 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 lives here. And right. but she's hardly ever home now because she's so in demand all over the place. And uh, uh, she reached out to us about coming in because she wrestled here for uh, AWF, Arizona Wrestling Federation. And um, uh, she she was great. She was a bubbly girl, just very, very, very loving what she's doing. But, you know, we try to uh, get everybody here, everybody that's, you know, whether you're the big time league or you're in the indie league. Uh, if you're into wrestling, that's what we're here for. And, um, you know, last month we had, the month before we had Rikishi, uh, actually was, he, he was February actually. And he, was, he was the last minute replacement for demolition, right? So, he was. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and he was wonderful and, uh, it was nice to reconnect with him and just hear him go. Like I, I went to, to the proper channels to, to bring him in here, uh, because I didn't realize that I had his phone number. And so mm -hmm. by the time he came in and he saw me and he goes, Hey, you're Kurt's boy, aren't you? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, don't we don't don't we have like don't you have my information? I said, as a matter of fact, I do, but I didn't contact you directly. Blah blah blah. I go send in the future. Just con just call me directly. He said, mm -hmm. and he was absolutely wonderful with the fans. I think that's one of the most enjoyable experiences that we've had um, uh, with talent coming in here. Everybody walked out of here feeling like they were special. Man, it was great. So it's a good feeling when you have people come in there and, and they want to shake your hand, or some of them actually want to give you a hug and say. Thank you, man. I, I got to meet one of my childhood heroes, and and uh, that's what the store is all about. So continue to keep growing. It's, it's so it's so nice to see that you know a year and a bit in that you're still there, you're still doing. It. I mean, hey, you're busy. You know, it's harder for us to find time for each other, and it's hard for you. I'm to at that, I, I've talked to you privately about that. You know, you made the reference. You know, like I, I did that when I was in my 20s, and that's why I'm enjoying what I am now. It's like that, and I waited till now. No, my, my my the opposite. I'm in my 50s where I'm eating shit now to hopefully enjoy something a little bit later. Because obviously, as you and I have talked before, I have bigger aspirations than this one store. And, um, you know, it, it's, you got you got to crawl before you can walk, man. And this is it's it's a struggle. Well, you're, you're doing it, you know. It's a struggle. And, it's, uh, you know, some days you feel like you want to give up. There are people that do and there are people that don't. And you're a guy that does. End of story. It's tough. But, um, but uh, yeah, if you guys ever. And another thing before we go on the next subject here or close out. Uh, we get a lot of out-of-towners here. This this has become a destination spot for a lot of people sure. who look us up. So, I mean, I'm talking, I have a regular customer that flies in from Portland. Nice. Uh, uh, because his sister lives here. So he comes here every three, four months. So and he cool. comes in here and he shops. Um, I have customers that drive from El Paso, Texas. Wow. That's a, that's a six, six plus hour drive. 
They come in here, they buy their shit, and they drive right back home. That's nuts. Um, I've got people who fly in from Florida, people who flew in from, uh, you know, uh, New York. I have, I had somebody, a family come in from Toronto. They're out here looking for houses because it's talking about the, you know, the, the, the crazy prices that's up there in Toronto. It's like that. They're looking for, you know, a house yeah, out this, here. This, this I know about. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, of course, they talk about property. I go, I know a guy. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, so I'm, they're coming from all over the place. And, and I ask every single customer that comes in, how did you hear about us? Like, uh, uh, how did you find out about us? I found you on Facebook or I Google search you. Um, I saw you on TikTok. So, you know, our social media, you know, um, uh, uh, posts are, are really uh, uh, doing doing something. And um, so it, to me, it's when I get that kind of feedback, I kind of, oh, I take a deep breath, go, okay, it's worth it. It's actually worth it. Like doing that, all that work of sitting on the toilet while I'm taking a dump, you know, doing my social media, it's like that, or laying in bed before I go to bed, doing my social media. I know well, I'm doing a lot with my five-year-old. You never market dead. enough, you know, in retail, you know, spreading the you word. It, it, it's, you know, it's, and, and while, while social you are, media what you are, what you're all about, they don't come. While, while social media and the Google searches are very, very important, I still am a big believer and I see it all the time. Nothing beats word of mouth and mm -hmm. nothing beats hitting the streets. Yep. So I've got some some new campaigns that I'm uh, that I'm planning on doing here in the coming month or so that I think is going to help out even more for the store. And, um, you know, TikTok's a beautiful thing sometimes when you're actually, you know, have alter the, your algorithms to kind of focus on what it is that you're looking at. So when you start watching more small business tutorials or entrepreneur type uh, motivational things, you start seeing other things and all of a sudden you're like, that's actually pretty damn smart. I'm going to try trying to do that. <laughs> you're never too old to, to learn, you know? No, no. And, and, and here's the flip side. So I'm going to, I'm going to tie this into the, to the, to, to what we do in the cards like that. It's, it's, WTC as a whole has taken a hit in the sense that it's not being updated as frequently as it used to be uh, up until about a month, not even a month ago, three weeks ago, I hadn't even logged into the account since early December, just because I don't have time. Uh, and even if I had time and I can, I, I take that back, I could make time if I wanted to, but I'm not motivated to do it right now because my focus has to be about the store because the WTC site makes me nothing, makes me no money um it, there's always that potential that it could there's always potential the price guide could make money outside of ads there's just not enough motivation for me to spend a shit ton of time on it to focus and say that's my focus now we're going to make this the business and make this happen well, those those um, sites are labors of love is what they are they're 100 percent labors we, of love you and i over the last 20 years have, have made it our, our our business to find out about this stuff to archive mm -hmm. it and to get it out there and, you know, if, if you fall a little bit behind, luckily I've got the indie stuff for me, it's, yeah. you know, I've, I've got that up to date, you know, and people know, people know yeah. that, uh, you know, where, where to go and, and what to find. Cause if they're not coming to us, you're not finding it. And that's true. And, and Chuckster is always the voice of reason for me, sure. always the voice of reason where, you know, it sat dormant for seven years with no updates and he goes, dude, this is nothing. Okay. It's, fine. it's okay to take these breaks. Basically is what he's telling me. Uh, it'll get done. I mean, sure. think of all the stuff that you updated in the less than one year's time. We have you it. Know, after, you know, it's not we like, have it all. The good, the good thing is that when you're ready to go, you turn on price guide and go bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang. Because all I've done is I've taken Armand's and I've taken Nick's and I've taken Chuck's that I know you have sitting in your box and I've got them up. in my inbox. So they don't yeah. get lost. So yeah. they're okay. They're on, they're on price guide now. They're there. You know, yeah. at least even if the, the, the checklist isn't complete, even if the numbers aren't right, mm -hmm. we acknowledge that this set exists. Yeah. You know, and that's all that really matters. The tracks, right. So that three, four years from now, we say, hey, did you know that in 2024, there was a such and such set that we missed? That's likely not going to happen because we got the right team in place. We got yep. the right guys. I'm so appreciative of the brotherhood of group. Stuff. I'm so appreciative of the brotherhood group and any bits of information that anybody ever sends. And I uh, will publicly state that I apologize to anybody out there that I'm not communicating with on the norm like I used to, yourself included, Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I because it. I just, I just yeah, I do um, doing what I'm doing here and uh, it, it takes a lot, you know, and, and, and that's not even, you know, mm -hmm. taking into consideration all your normal life bullshit stuff, but. No, like scheduling, um, scheduling our guests for collector series. It's been tricky, you know. It's been tricky. Your hours and, you know, I could go off and do them on my own, but it's not the same thing, you know, that's why it's, yeah. 
you know, I like I like the format that we have, and I want to I want to stick with that. But I get it, you know. It'll um, get it'll it'll get updated in due time. I actually have a, a um I have a script a plan in my head that um I I plan on unrolling here hopefully this week uh, because it doesn't start until I actually have a conversation uh, with people that I'm I'm looking to have a conversation with and to uh, help make sure that uh, things get done properly. So thanks. All right, sir. The, what, uh, the only other thing I have left is a little bit of early hype for the uh, national this year. That's going to be happening yet again. Um, Adam is hard at work on main event two. We've got official word that the actual main event is going to happen in the IO center, uh, mm -hmm. which is where the actual national is happening. So it's not going to be last year. It was like next building over. So it's not like it was, uh, it was a last, last year, last year we were an independent wrestling promotion, having something outside of the actual main. <laughs> main. Yeah. Now, this now year, we're actually, now we're part of the actual show. Well, we're part of their, we're, what they do is they're saying, Hey, we're leaving the doors open. And we're going to give you guys a time with a bunch of other sports or whatever. And that's kind of good because then we don't have to go rent the space and spend that kind of money, which might give. Which is true. But I think the bigger picture here is that we're actually being acknowledged and recognized by the, the, the company itself. And we're a part of the show now. We're officially part of the show. Yeah. We're not some little offshoot from, a, you know, in a, in a ballroom. No, you know, we're, in a different this, hotel. this is a national sponsored thing. So hopefully they put some marketing muscle behind it and, and let, let people know. Also, there's going to be the panel. Um, yet again, that's separate from the main event. That's something that we've organized, you and I, over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. I expect it's going to be on a Thursday at 5 o'clock again. Um, I've asked for that time with Ethan. Let, let, let's see if that, that happens. There, there's politics. We often don't find out until um, <clears throat> the, the, the week up. But if you're going to be if you're going to be doing anything this summer and you want to get away and uh, enjoy the wrestling card hobby, come to the National. You know, we're going to be organizing a uh, Brotherhood dinner. Uh, for all of the go those guys that are uh, in town and we'll invite anybody else that wants to come join us. Um, sure. You know, me, you and Chuck have a couple of side projects planned. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's just going to be a good time. But you certainly don't want to miss the main event too and you don't want to miss the um, the panel, you know. Um, and we're hopeful we're hopeful, uh, hopeful to see as many faces out there as, uh, as possible. Agreed. It's going to be a good time, I hope. It's going to be a good time. No. I don't even hope. I know it's going to be a good time. I mean, we make sure that's a good time. And Chuck's uh, was coming. It, so make it a good time Chuck's was coming. Know. And it just, you know, last year was great, but it was missing that key element for me. And that was Chuck's year. Yep. So. Yeah, that's going to be good. So that's yep. all I have, brother. Anything else in, in, in your, your mind, you know? No. I, I just format of every, of every three months, by the way, because, you know, it, it seems that sometimes if we have to do these every four weeks, like we're sort of pushing ourselves to say stuff that maybe isn't that relevant or could wait for a couple of sure, Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So let, people who are watching or listening, you know, let us know what you think. Does quarterly sure. sound good to you? Because I think it sounds good to us. So, yeah, we're um, going to carry on with the collectors, but that's going to be winding down soon, too. That's not going to be going on forever. You know, it, it, it's it's you kind of do a whack of them, like you say, and then you're like, OK, I think we've covered off pretty much everything we want to accomplish here. And then we're going to probably take a break and enjoy the national. And then uh, to, listen, just like wrestling, man, and this podcast here, you never say never. No, you just, you don't it's, know. We're, it's just, we're here. There's always always something to talk about here. The, the the market keeps changing, the hobby keeps evolving, and you know we're doing our and best. And if to make there's sure big, that if there's big keep... news, and we need you need we need to see you guys a little more often than once a quarter, we'll do it. You know, um, Adam and Ryan are always at the ready if something really big breaks, and the four of us will do a, a super group to, yep. to talk about that. So you know, um, if you guys are only seeing, you, you see enough of us anyways with the collector series. So you know, this is <laughs> this is this is is nice to do this like just four times a year, and of course maybe I'll I'll do at the end of the year like I did just a one off of the top sales of the year, and that's it. I think uh, I think that that's a good bit of wrestling content for our brothers out there. Absolutely. So. I know everybody can go and find us at wrestlingtradingcards.com and everybody can find you over at the wrestling card price guide. You can find me at WTC and you can find you at wrestling card price guide. So, you know, go to, right. one, go to both of them. Just make sure you get to get to either one of them. If this is your first time checking us out. Appreciate it. Uh, go back and check out the archives of all the stuff we've been doing for the last several years. Uh, and then, you know, hit that subscribe button, man. Uh, you know, it, it, we may not be putting out a ton of content like we used to, but we're still putting out content yeah. and between us, between Adam and Ryan, between, you know, we never know what else might be popping up on the channel from here, here and there. Um, there's always going to be something here to help you guide you through the hobby. We have a lot of new collectors coming into the wrestling cards. And so, uh, and I know that because I, I get to see it in real time here with customers who come in here who've discovered either the old world's collide I used to do with Zan or they find that our monthlies or 
whatever the case may be, uh, they feel like that I'm learning a lot because I'm just getting into wrestling cards and, and uh, that's what we were trying to do, trying to help you out and help educate you. So I uh, always appreciate your time too, Paul, because I know you're a busy guy too. So My pleasure, my man. So that's it. So, we'll, tell, we'll catch you guys next time, man. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you soon. See ya. Out.